Yo, what is up guys, Coco Jobo here and welcome back to another DVD video. In today's video, we are going over the top 10 tips and tricks that you could be applying to your Dracula gameplay. Pretty much everything that I'm be going over is going to be giving you guys a little bit of something that you can be doing in order to help you win your chases, maybe get some downs quicker, or just simply win your games. If this is your first time here, welcome to my channel. If you're enjoying anything or finding anything informative, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe as it truly helps my channel. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, but let's get right into it. So for my first tip, what I want you guys to do is fake your hellfires to zone survivors out. I think a really cool thing to do is as you lift up that hellfire, people are going to start dodging and weaving. And what it could do is actually put them into a really bad spot, which pretty much all you have to do is just pull down your hellfire and then get that easy M1 attack. Another quick tip that I want to do is number two. If there is a crack, you can attack. Hey, yo. So pretty much what I mean by this is if you see any type of loop, hay bale, garbage, whatever, wherever you're looping, if you see there's a crack, you can shoot through it. This is so you can get some cheeky hits. Maybe you can um, stop people from trying to get another turn around that loop and just cut them off instantly. Also, too. Another rule of thumb is if you can see their heads over the loop, then most likely you can shoot it. Test this out on different areas. All the different areas on the map, different loops, have just some cheeky spots that you can hit. So test out the waters. Maybe if you go for that shot and you get the hit, you never know you would be able to hit it unless you would have attempted it. So try out some spots and have fun with that. Number three. Hug tech is a useful but risky maneuver. So if you guys don't know what hug teching is, mainly it's when you point your camera down, do a lunge or a pounce, and it will just you just slide off of the um, the the wall. And then if you look up, you'll know where to go next for that second attack. It is good, but there are some loops that have like little objects that stick out. So be careful for this because this can mess up your chases and give the survivors an extension on getting distance between you and them. This is the slide teching or the slide movement. So if you guys didn't know, this is something that can end chases quickly. So what I would recommend is if you know a loop it has a certain funnel or a certain way, what you could do is pre-fire that pounce attack, do a 180 around a corner, and you should be able to get some really good hits. I have a video out on that. The slide movement is really strong. Check out that video. I think you guys will totally have a blast with those attacks. Number five, bounce off of walls to make your second pounce come out faster. So again, just bouncing off, <laughs> a little pun intended, bouncing off of number four. If you are able to cut down the chase quickly, you can bounce off a wall and then hit someone quicker. So everyone's used to the bounce, the the, the pounce um, timing. It'll go pounce, you'll pounce, and then another one. But you can actually make it come out faster by hitting a wall. And then you'll be able to, if you have a fast enough reaction time, be able to attack the survivor before they get to a window or another vault location. It's really good. Try to use that just to end chases quicker. Number six, leave pallets down if you need an extra vault location to fly to. So this is really cool for bat form. A lot of locations are just a vault or maybe it, it is a pallet, maybe it is a god pallet and you want to get rid of it. What's really cool is you can leave that down, especially on maps kind of like the uh, the D&D map. You can be downstairs and if you left something upstairs or even if it's just um, maps that have multi-levels, you can leave it there so that you can just cut um, some time down by just teleporting right upstairs or downstairs to get your chases going quicker. What's really nice about this is if you also use the purple add-ons, it's called the Lapis and the the Lapis and the Medusa. You can slow down survivors when you teleport, and you can also block vault locations, window vault locations, to be able to get an easy hit and end your traces quicker. Number seven, this is a really tip, good tip for bat form. I see a lot of people getting um, lost. Once the scratch marks stop, immediately transform into the vampire or the wolf form. This is because you, if you see them stop, that means that the survivors have stopped running. I know this is kind of obvious, but a lot of times we try to track them down. And if you don't have a nice map like Mother's Dwelling or the, the Swamp map, you won't hear the squishiness or the pitter pattering of survivors running. Um, sometimes if you're on an indoor map like RPD and you can hear the echo of their feet stomping, that can help you to find survivors but a lot of times they'll just do a 180 or run or walk in a different direction and by the time you've 
maybe thought of stopping and transforming, they're already gone in a different direction. So maybe you listen for their breath, but most likely if you see the scratch marks stop, you should stop as well. For number eight, this one, like I said, kind of bounces off of number seven. Watch the grass or listen for breathing or the footsteps as this will help you locate survivors. So again, if you're on like a swamp map or um, any map that has grass, if you could see it shake a little bit, that means that the survivors are running into it. And if you see the scratch mark stop, make sure to just stop. Listen for the breathing also to your model can collide with survivors i've seen it on times where i've literally landed right on them like right on their cheeks and i've been able to just get an easy down or maybe a quick injure because i just felt that collision kind of like with spirit there's collision there so feel for it Number nine goes with my personal experience with chases, and it's finding the ultimate way or the optimal way of chasing survivors. So how it starts for me is I start in bat mode. Instantly, once I see see where they're located or if I hear them on the gen, I switch to vampire, I attack, and then I switch to wolf form. This is because wolf form, you can see the blood more brighter and you can see scratch marks more thicker and you get scent orbs. So it's a really good way to First get that first hit with Vampire or maybe use your Hellfire, then switch to Wolf Mode, then you can get like a Pounce, but it just allows you to locate survivors quicker. And then after that, if they do, or, um, if you're able to get a hit on them and they run away or maybe they use Dead Hard something, then use bat, foam, bat Form to catch up to them because you're faster in Bat Form and then you can switch into your um, two forms to finish out the chase. And number 10 is just a simple overall like rule of thumb, what you should be doing when you are going after survivors. So like I mentioned earlier, if there's a short height loop, like a waist high loop to you, use your Hellfire. If they are just a W gamer, use your Pounce. And if you need to get around the map faster or if you need to just gain some distance, spam your teleport ability. This is really good, especially if it's just a, a little teleport. Anything helps because you do go at 10 meters per second versus your 44.6 or 4.8 meters per second when you are in vampire or in wolf form with the haste. This is just really good because, again, this game is all about timing. And if you waste time, that gives survivors more time to do generators safely. And if you're not keeping up the pressure, whether you're chasing someone, hooking someone, downing someone, getting on gens, getting them away from your hooks, getting them away from your gens, anything you can do to gain you an advantage. If you're not doing anything, you're wasting time and thus you're going to lose your games. But if you're doing any of these top 10 tips, I think these will all help you out to gain an advantage in the game besides your perks so that you can win your matches. So yeah, those are my top 10 tips on how to improve your Dracula gameplay. If you guys found any of this helpful or informative, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. If you guys also want me to do maybe a top 10 advanced tips for advanced gameplay on Dracula, make sure to hit that like button as I'll let me know if you guys wanna see that. But again, if you guys need anything else, a killer guide, any crazy different builds, we have tons of those on my channel, so make sure to check those out. But thank you guys so much again for watching. Stay positive, stay safe, guys. Have fun out there, and I'll see you guys in the fog. Take care, everybody.